Over this Easter season, Christians all over the world celebrate the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. And whether or not Jesus did rise from the dead is something that is still debated today. But after his resurrection, Jesus himself posed three questions. If you like, questions that we may have concerning whether or not we believe in the resurrection. The first question that I want to address today that Jesus asked is a question directed to our intellect. Let's read a passage from the Bible from the Gospel of Luke. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who had said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. The question Jesus asks is, what are you discussing as you walk along together? We found out what they were talking about from a reading, but that question that Jesus said led Jesus to explaining to them everything that was said about him in the scriptures showing that he had to die and that he would rise again. In other words, Jesus addressed their intellect. He helped them understand in their minds how the Messiah, which is who Jesus is, had to suffer and die and then be raised to life. He directed them towards the evidence of historical records that prophesied the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. In the book of Psalms, which was in, in a psalm called Psalm 22, which was written over a thousand years before Jesus came to the earth, and in the prophet Isaiah in chapter 53, written 700 years before Jesus came to earth, are two of the most well-known prophecies concerning his death. They showed why Jesus had to die. Today is Good Friday a day in which we remember the death of Jesus. Jesus was crucified by the Romans, a cruel and painful way to die. The religious leaders of the day who wanted Jesus out of the way thought they had got rid of him, but actually Jesus died for us. All of us, you see, all of us have fallen short of God's standard. We've all done something, said something, thought something that went against God's standard. And God in his justice has to punish our wrongdoing against him. We've gone against his commands and our punishment is eternal separation from him. But Jesus came, he lived a perfect life and on the cross he took every single thing that we have done wrong all of mankind, past, present and future. All of us were included. 
So instead of punishing every single one of us individually, God punished Jesus once for us all. That's why Jesus died. Jesus paid the price of death for every single one of us. He took the punishment for us so we don't have to. So because Jesus died for us, his resurrection from the dead is not only worth celebrating, it's worth believing in. In Jesus rising from the dead, it means that what separated us from God has been overcome. A new outcome is available. No longer is punishment for what we've done wrong a certainty when we die, but Jesus has provided a way for there to be a different outcome, an outcome that gives us hope, an outcome that says there is no longer any reason to be separated from God. We can come by faith to God, believing in what Jesus has done for us on the cross, receiving his forgiveness for all the wrong we have done, and having a hope that when we die, we will not receive punishment for what we've done wrong, but we can point to Jesus who took it all for us, meaning that when we die, we will actually have life because Jesus is risen. Jesus asked a question and addressed the intellect of the men on the road to Emmaus. He told them to look at the evidence. And today, if you're not convinced, then why not look at the evidence? Jesus is alive today. He really is who he said he is. Will you believe in him today?